We know it's been a challenge for companies to get employees back into the office. What does that mean for the commercial real estate market? What are you seeing? Well, we certainly have seen a, a bit slower people coming back to the office than we expected, and it's different by region. Uh, certainly slower in the United States, Europe, and Australia than, and Australia than we've seen in Asia. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it is uh, people are coming back. And what it means for the commercial real estate office market is this, is people are trying to anticipate not only when people will come back, but when will greater leasing activity come back. And I would say that the good news is that we've actually seen a significant pickup in leasing activity in terms of leasing new space uh, versus the somewhat disappointing amount of people coming back physically to the office. Uh, but nevertheless, that is coming back slowly, but it is coming back. And where is it coming back? Is it mostly confined to cities like New York and San Francisco? No, that's actually not the case. Uh, New York and San Francisco were a bit of a laggard behind some of the southern cities in the United States, cities like Dallas, where I happen to be sitting right now, Austin, Texas, uh, some Phoenix, Arizona, Florida. A lot of these so southern and southeastern cities have been faster than some of the major markets like New York, San Francisco, Chicago. But even in those markets, we are slowly seeing people come back to the office. What does that mean for pricing? Are commercial real estate owners doing more to provide incentives to get these companies to, to sign new listings? Well, clearly. And when you sign a commercial real estate lease, the ways that landlords give you incentives isn't just the rent. It's what's also known as the tenant improvement allowance or money to fit out the space. And clearly, we've seen an increase in those tenant improvement allowances uh, to give people incentives to come back into their space. But landlords are also upgrading the physical building itself for things like having a more sustainable building, which is a big issue for many occupiers, having more flexible space, having more outdoor amenities. They're doing all these things that are outside of the tenant's individual space to get them into the building, but then additional incentives being given to the tenant itself. Of those companies who are increasing their office footprint, can you describe the profile of these tenants, technology companies, financial firms, banks? What are you seeing? Well, I would say it's all over in terms of which clients are getting bigger faster, uh, because I think that different clients have different types of incentives to get people back. Now, I would say, as a general matter, all of them have cultural reasons, productivity reasons, collaboration reasons for wanting to get people back into the office, but some of them have regulatory reasons. Financial services firms have to have security that is at a higher level than perhaps other firms, so they have to have people back into the office more than others, but also firms that have more of an apprenticeship culture, which could include accounting firms, law firms, others, have to get people back into the office so that they can not only get the work done, but more importantly, it help them advance in their careers in soft ways like communication and networking skills. We know return to work is a challenge for real estate in general, but isn't rising interest rates a bigger challenge for these commercial real estate companies? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. They're, they're really, I would say, equal in terms of problems of getting people back into the office so that people have the certainty of when leasing is going to happen. But the rising interest rates have been a significant issue in a variety of ways. So first of all, rising interest rates have raised the cost of capital. And by raising the cost of capital, it has caused cap rates or the yields on office buildings uh, to rise, as it has in most other real estate asset classes as well. But because interest rates have ri risen along with inflation, what you're seeing is the cost of of CapEx has gone up as well. But in addition to the CapEx for an individual asset, it has also gone up for the cost of new construction. So I guess on the other side of the coin, new construction will slow down a bit as well because interest rates and inflation is higher, which will help to some degree the existing office stock.